Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it in order to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid, not dashed line. That indicates that the shape has been selected. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the left end of the Format tab, in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, is the Insert Shapes group. The large scroll box in this group contains quick access to the shapes that you can insert and functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab does. To the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape and the Draw Text Box button. For shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the Scribble, you can click the Edit Shape button after you finish drawing the object in order to display the editing points for the object. You can then click and drag the editing points in order to change the shape of the object. You can click the Draw Text Box button to draw a text box in your document. This button functions the same way as the Draw Text Box button that you can select from the Text Box button on the Insert tab in the ribbon does. Now, in the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and the line of the shape. You can scroll through the choices that are shown in the large scroll box of Preset Shape Appearances and click on the one that you would like to apply to your shape if desired. You can also simply use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fills drop-down button to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines and arrows. If you wish to select a color, then just simply click on one of the fill color choices shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. Now if the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors option in order to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you want. You can either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab and then select the color that you want. Note that at the bottom of both tabs, you can use the Transparency slider to set the level of transparency that you want to apply. Now if you open the Color dialog box to create a custom color, click the OK button once you have made a choice in order to apply the selected color. Note that if you did apply a fill effect to a shape, and then wish to remove it, you can select the No Fill command in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu in order to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, you would choose the Picture command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu of choices to open the Select Picture dialog box. Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you want to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the gradient command in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu, and then clicking on the preset gradient that you want to apply to the shape. If you want to add a texture to the shape, then choose the Texture command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu, and then click on the texture that you want to apply from the side choices shown in the menu. Now back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you will find the Shape Outline button. Now the choices that you make here affect the appearance of the line in the shape. 
This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. So if you click the Shape Outline button, you'll see that you can easily select color shown in the color palette of choices in order to change the line color of your selected shape. If you want to remove the line color, then select the No Outline choice from the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. If you want to change the width of the shape's outline, then simply make a choice from the Weight command by rolling over the Weight command and then selecting a Weight from the side menu that appears. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the dashes command. Now if you are formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, then you can change the endpoints on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu of choices. Now back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you'll also see the Shape Effects button. You can click this button to view a drop-down listing of the various preset effects grouped by category that you can apply to the selected shape. Simply roll over the desired category within the drop-down menu and then click on the desired category setting in the side menu that appears. If you have word art or a text box selected in your document, then you can apply the style settings shown in the word art styles group on the format tab of the drawing tools contextual tab in the ribbon. You can select a desired word art style from the listing shown in the scroll box in this group. Also note, you can click the Text Fill drop-down button to select a fill effect for the text within a text box or word art from the drop-down menu. The choices that you have displayed here are the exact same choices that you have when you click the Shape Fill button in the Shape Style section. You can next click the Text Outline drop-down button to select an outline effect for the text within your selected text box or word art from the drop-down menu. The choices that you have displayed here are the exact same choices that you have when you click the Shape Outline button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Effects drop-down button to select a special effect for the text within your selected text box or word art from the drop-down menu. Once again, the choices that you have displayed here are the exact same choices that you have when you click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles group. You can also click the Text Direction drop-down button to select a direction for the text to flow within your selected word art or text box from the drop-down menu that appears. You can click the Align Text drop-down button to select a side of the word art or text box to which you want to align the text. You can use the Create Link button to create a link between the text contained in two text boxes. Now to use this feature, you must have two text boxes in your document and the text box that will catch the overflow text must be empty or blank.
You then select the first text box and click the Create Link button. Your mouse pointer will appear as a picture when you hold it over the document. You then click on the empty or blank text box that will then display any overflow text from the first text box. Then you can type your text into the first text box and when it can no longer display the text, the overflow will then appear in the linked text box as a continuation. So this allows you to create multi-column text box articles within a customizable layout in your Word document. So note that if you click the Create Link button and then you change your mind, you can click the Escape key on your keyboard to cancel the linking. Later on, if you want to break the link between the two text boxes, you can just simply click the Break Link button and the text will revert back to the primary text box. Now the button shown in the Arrange group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab display the same options available when formatting pictures and clip art. So in the Arrange group, you'll find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping for the selected shape. You can click the Position button to select one of the preset placement options for the selected shape. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. Now if you have overlapping shapes in your document, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other within the stack. You can click the Align button in order to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is used if you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document. In this case, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. Note that you can also take a shape that has been grouped together and click the Group drop-down button to display the menu of choices. You can then select the Ungroup command to break the shapes back into their separate components. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for your selected shape in your document. Like images, you can also use the Size section to resize the shape if desired. You can use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the shape height or shape width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.